Tonight, Amazon snaps up Twitch, the NSA builds a secret Google-like search engine, and TiVo launches an alternative to Ariel. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 158 for Monday, August 25th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like Mabel Habanero Pretzel Pops. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twits. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's start off with our top story tonight that Amazon has somehow beaten Google to the punch and will buy Twitch. Eric Newcomer, who's a reporter at The Information, broke the story with the article, Amazon to acquire Twitch for $970 million. And he joins us now. Hello, Eric. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. So I thought that this whole Twitch Google thing was a done deal. So did everybody else. What happened? Yeah, so do we. I mean, the news had broken... A few months ago, you know, we it, not something we'd reported on and just sort of was one of those things that was taken for granted. OK, Google's going to buy Twitch. And then you know, it started getting word that a deal was going down with Amazon. Um, you know, they, they announced it later today. We posted it this morning. And so that was a surprise to sort of much of the Valley press and, and everybody else trying to figure it out. Um, we, we've now sort of have some more answers. My colleague Amir Fradi has done some of the reporting on Google. And so it looks sort of as if, you know, Google was not going to give Twitch as much leeway as, you know, they might have had with Amazon. And that could could have been one of the issues that sort of sort of pushed them away from the Google deal. Now, both Amazon and Twitch had, had, had put out their own press releases. So it was obviously official. My first reaction was, oh, Amazon must have overbid Google, Google was apparently going to, to bid $1 million. What do you mean by Google not being able to offer Twitch maybe some of the things that Amazon was going to offer? Because, as you said, $970 million, well, they didn't overbid. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on the pricing. It's not totally clear. It, you know, people had been reporting that it was going to be more than a billion uh, if Google was going to acquire Twitch. Some people are still saying that it's 970 million in cash, but there might be sort of other components to that. So it's not 100% clear to me that it was a price problem. I think it's sort of some issues with, you know, Twitch wants to sort of maintain its brand and its sort of relationship with its customers and wanted to be able to sort of organize events, but they were going to have to sort of go through sort of an approval process within Google that gave them some pause. So, all right. So Twitch and Google, to me, made a lot of sense. Obviously, Google's got YouTube. They, 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 they certainly have the bandwidth. Um, there's quite a bit of, of, of bandwidth being used on the Twitch network. So, so much of it, in fact. Um, I think at one point it's like, you know, 60% at certain times of the day or something like that of, of video. Does it, does it make sense that Amazon would just want something that was obviously so important for Google to have? Or how does this really fit into Amazon's strategy going forward? Because Amazon is a little all over the map these days. They've got a credit card reader. They've got the Fire Phone, the Fire TV. They're doing original content. Where does Twitch fit in? Yeah. No, it's a great question. I mean, right, with, Go with YouTube, you know, there's a clear sort of synergy. YouTube hasn't, you know, totally mastered live. And Twitch was sort of going to be the answer for that. With Amazon, I think there are a couple of things. I mean, one, Amazon has AWS, so there's sort of infrastructural sort of ways that Amazon can help Twitch. I think also it's just sort of a matter of directing sort of these avid video game players to the Amazon store where they can buy, you know, video games online. That's going to make, you know, it's a powerful force for sort of driving purchases online. And I think Amazon probably realizes that and they're competing with, you know, uh, Valve's Steam Store, which is sort of doing a huge number of video game, game sales online. So this is definitely a good marketing platform for them. And you think Amazon can handle uh, the, the barrage of traffic? Do you think that the, the way that Twitch is set up changes at all under an Amazon umbrella? You know, I'm not totally sure, but I'm sure it's something that they're looking at and figuring out, you know, how, 
how do we manage that data better given that we're Amazon and we are the experts on this? Well, it was certainly interesting news on a Monday morning. Thanks so much to Eric Newcomer, reporter for The Information, and let folks know where they can keep up with more of your work. Sure. Um, Eric Newcomer on Twitter or just Eric at TheInformation.com. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Coming up a little bit later in the show, wearable fitness trackers show how many people woke up during an earthquake. It's pretty cool. But first... Is it okay if we talk about food for a minute? I would like to talk about food. Snack food specifically, delicious stuff. I'm talking about NatureBox, of course, because NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial ever, and they taste really good. NatureBox will send these snacks right to your door, your office, wherever you want them to, really. Free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Here's how it works. You click on the continue button. And then you choose between three subscription options. Then you place your order. There's lots of dietary needs that can go into effect. Uh, vegan, soy-free, uh, you're gluten conscious, non-GMO, all of that stuff. And then the next time you get hungry and you're ready to eat something, then you can just go to Nature Box and not to the vending machine or that candy dish that we have at Twit that is always calling to me. No, I've got Nature Box. I don't need it. You can snack guilt-free on PB&J granola, sounds weird, I guarantee it's good. Bruschetta pretzel pops, over 100 more healthy snacks. And you can get 50% off your first box by going to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. And now let's get right into the rest of our tech feed. In fact, here's something a little bit less delicious and more likely hard to swallow. According to classified documents obtained by The Intercept, the National Security Agency, or NSA, has been secretly providing data to more than 1,000 analysts at 23 U.S. government agencies that perform intelligence work with its own search engine sharing over 850 billion records about phone calls, emails, cell phone locations, and internet chats for years. The search engine is called IC Reach and lists the DEA, the FBI, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Defense Intelligence Agency as core members, among others. Information shared through IC Reach can be used to track people's movements, map their network of associates, help predict future actions, reveal religious affiliations or political beliefs, and not just for foreigners, but apparently millions of records on American citizens that aren't accused of any wrongdoing, at least not yet. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden provided details about IC Reach's existence in an archive of materials provided to The Intercept. Now, previously, the NSA acknowledged that it shares some of its collected data with domestic agencies like the FBI, but details about the method and the scope were never detailed. Another scary news. Are you ready? Surveillance systems are secretly collecting the movements of almost anybody who carries a cell phone, whether they're close by or even on another continent to map people's travels over days or weeks or even longer, and then making that information available to governments across the world. This is according to company marketing documents and experts in surveillance technology speaking to the Washington Post. The technology works by exploiting how all cellular networks basically keep detailed real-time records on the locations of their customers so that they can deliver calls and other services to them. But by typing a phone number into a computer portal of some kind and then collecting information from the location database maintained by cellular carriers, their surveillance systems learn which cell tower a target is currently using, and that also reveals location. One industry official that was speaking anonymously said that dozens of countries have bought or leased this kind of technology in recent years. In light of these claims, the Federal Communications Commission has said it will investigate possible misuse of tracking technology that collects location data from carrier databases. Well, Microsoft has had a bit of an off year in China. We've reported that the Chinese government agency banned people from installing Windows 8 on its machines due to potential security concerns. And earlier this summer, Chinese government officials raided Microsoft offices in the country reportedly to investigate monopolistic practices. Now, a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering speaking with the Xinhao News Agency claims that in October the country will launch its own operating system for desktop PCs, including an app store. If successful, the new OS could push out American rivals such as Windows and Mac OS X altogether, and foreign operating systems could potentially be eradicated from the nation's computers in two years or less. Although not necessarily. Back in 2000, China created, remember this, Red Flag Linux? 
I remember, which was required to be installed on all state computers, but it never actually gained traction with the general Chinese public. And of course, that's where all the numbers are. For what it's worth, Windows 9 might be publicly revealed sometime in late September or early October, which makes the timing of all this very interesting. Back in June, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against Aereo, that's a service which used little banks of tiny antennas and a cloud-based DVR to let people redirect over the RTV to connected devices. Remember Aereo? It was well-liked. But the court found Aereo violated federal copyright law. Now, TiVo is getting into the mix with the $50 TiVo Romeo OTA which is sort of like the most basic model of the TiVo Romeo. It can record for four shows at once, has enough hard disk space for 75 hours of HD video. But with the Romeo OTA, a customer can only record TV that they can pull in with an antenna. Then again, with OTA antennas, there's a lot of HD content available and it's all free. It'll be available at 430 Best Buy stores beginning in September and will be $15 per month with a one-year commitment. And good for, you know, people who already like TiVo. Facebook really wants to downplay articles that fall under the category of clickbait. As of today, the world's biggest social network is introducing two updates aimed at helping clean up the news feed. Number one, it's cracking down on clickbait headlines, which Facebook defines as, quote, when a publisher posts a link with a headline that encourages people to click to see more without telling them much information about what they will see. The company will now look at the ratio of people clicking on the content compared to people discussing and sharing it with their friends, operating under the idea that lower engagement, which is likes or comments or shares, relative to the click signals clickbait. The second thing Facebook is doing is now encouraging the sharing of articles as links instead of as photo captions by giving better rankings to links which are posted in the link format. That's when you copy and paste a link into the text box as compared to links that are in photo captions. Now, if only all of my California friends earthquake updates from 3 a.m. on Sunday morning weren't still at the top of my news feed, we'd really be getting somewhere. And speaking of earthquakes, let's just end on an earthquake note, shall we? Some interesting data actually came out of wearable fitness trackers over the weekend in California, measuring the sleeping patterns of the people who were wearing them and suddenly jumped up or otherwise moved. On Sunday, Jawbone data scientist aggregated data from up users based on location to visualize thousands of people waking up at once when the quake, which is based near Napa, hit was a pretty intense spike, actually. Now, the U.S. Geological Survey website also offers a way for anyone to report that they felt a quake, data that scientists and the media use to track just how far a quake has traveled. But that, you know, you can claim anything, pretty much. The Jawbone data shows that 93% of up users within 15 miles of the quake's epicenter woke up or at least moved in some radical way while well, just a little more than half of the users in San Francisco and Oakland, which is more miles away, were awakened by the shaking. See, it's the new era of wearable fitness. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I don't know why I'm smiling. Earthquakes are scary. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.